So the reason why I call this uh, the revolutionary women arising is because um, the Lord is called, you know, we're an end time movement and God wants us to know who we are. Can you all see me? It's like I feel like I need a step stool. When Melissa, when you come, we're going to have you down here and you can preach. <laughs> I like her being around me because I feel like I'm 5'8". Anyway, <laughs> so, you know, when you look up the word revolutionary, it means sudden impact, dramatic marked change. It means constituting or bringing about a fundamental train, change, radically new or innovative. And that's who we are. That's what the Lord wants to do for us. Because when the Lord gave me that word about cutting off the old, he wants us to cut off the old mindsets. He wants us to break out of things that are holding us back, that limits us. Because the word of God says in Psalm 78 that he doesn't want, he, he was aggravated with the, the people of Israel because they limited the Holy One of Israel through their doubt and unbelief. And so what we have to see ourselves as uh, warrior women. And so for those of you who, who feel like, well, you know, I'm not that, you know, screaming Mimi kind of a lady. I'm not asking you to be a female Ram Rambo, but you can be a, a soft warrior, right? But know who you are in Christ. And know that God wants to do great exploits. We heard about the Ancient of Days was present here. And so the books are open. And he's reading the books about what he has for each and every one of us here. And it's not to stay in a mindset of defeat or worthlessness or, or low self-esteem or, you know, I'm just, I'm just never going to amount to anything. Those days are over. And so uh, the, some of the... Um, uh, synonyms that I was looking up and I was thinking about was women, we are fierce. We are determined. We are fearless. We are bold. We're courageous. We're passionate. And we're worthy and we're capable. Jesus was a, a passionate warrior. We have his DNA in us. He was a reformer. We're called to reform. We're called to make social changes in our area, in our sphere, in our neighborhoods, in our family. Why not? Why not? Why not? Right? We're living in a day and age right now where Lord Jesus America needs Jesus. And we need to know who we are. We need to know the word of God. We need to know that we cannot be silent. We, we have a voice. But, I mean, to speak in respect, and when, when I say revolutionary women, I'm not talking about men against women. We honor and respect each other, okay? So let's just get that clear. And so we have a, a force within us. And we are an end time movement. That's one of the words that, I mean, Chuck Pierce wrote in his book, and I, I wrote um, a quote that he wrote in one of his books. It says that the enemy will oppress and attempt to stop women from becoming all that God has created them to be. And if he is able, Satan will enslave us to accomplish his will on the earth. But Despite the enemy's effort to oppress and seduce women, we are about to see women arise and influence the world in a way never seen before. Do you believe that? I believe that. But you say, well, how can that be? Well, first of all, we have to know who we are in Christ. First of all, we have to recognize that, that we are an end-time army. We are the Gideon 300. We're the army that God is raising up, the remnant that's saying, listen, not on my watch. What does that picture say? You're not, what does it say? Not, you're not feeling... You're not stealing my inheritance, right? And so what's your inheritance? What's your, what's your inheritance even in your family? What's the destiny? What's God promised you? How many of us are not walking in what God has asked us to do? And so I had to, I had to war through all that, you know? And, and every single one of us have stuff and issues that we've had to plow through. But God, and it's, you know, I love the scripture where it says that if God be for us, who can be against us? He's on our side. You know, I used to have such... I, I, am, I don't know why I write notes. I used to have such fear of man <laughs> and intimidation. And, and even though, you know, I grew up in inner city and you were rough and tough and, you know, who are you looking at? You know, like you're looking at me kind of a thing. But then again, when it came time to really face up against someone you were intimidated with, you totally would back down, right? Or I would and I just had no self-confidence. And the Lord said to me, girl, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to believe me. For what my word says about you rather than what your feelings say. See, faith is not a feeling. You know, we have to trust the word of God. And that was my thing. And when I got saved, for those of you who don't know me, I didn't, you know, go to a church. I didn't know we're born again in New Jersey and went to church. But I was told to read the Bible. I knew to read the Bible. And I had my little Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland booklets that helped me to really develop my faith walk. And it was not a matter of what 
the, you know, what I felt. It was, you know, what God said about me. And, and I had struggles in it. I can't say that I was just like, you know, wow, here it is. You know, here's who I am. And, you know, I just plowed through and everything was fine. No, I went through hell. And so how many of you have gone through hell and then some? You know, and you had to plow through. But you had to still believe the word of God no matter what. And so that's my word to you today. I don't care what you're feeling. I don't care what the lie of the enemy has said to you. Whose voice is louder? Is it the Lord's voice or are you listening to the devil's voice? I, there, there was a season that his voice was louder because I agreed with him. So we have to break soul ties with those lies. See, we became one with them. That's why they're so strengthened in our lives. We have, to, we have to break soul ties with the lies of the enemy to break us out of that place of deficiency or defeat or less than or not good enough. You know, that's over. That's done and over with. And so, like, there could still be little areas of your life where you may believe that and say, well, you know, I can't do this. Like, if the Lord's telling you to do something, you can do it. If he says you're a powerful woman of God, you are. And the devil's afraid of us knowing who we are because we will kick his sorry behind. And so we take a stand for the word of God. And that's just where it's at. And so I had a dream, and I had a dream three times about the signet, a signet ring. And the third time I had this dream, um, when the Lord gave me the signet ring, and I knew I was representing people, it was men and women, and the Lord's, and, and so he said, you are the signet ring. And I, I knew it was in Haggai, and I read it, and it said that in Haggai that he's going to shake everything that needs to be shaken, right? And that we have authority, and that we are that signet ring. He said to Haggai, you're that signet ring. Well, in the dream, I was releasing a word, and when I released that word, Whatever I was coming against, it was like an architectural st a structure I saw, and it literally shattered and fell to the ground. And what the Lord was saying, we are you, myself, each and every one of us, we are his signet rings, and we are releasing great authority. We have authority. We're coming into a new level of authority that we are going to shatter strongholds. We're going to release words that are like that. The suddenlies are going to come because God is saying to us, we've been in that wilderness season. I've been teaching on Elisha, and before Elisha went to Mount Carmel, he was at Brook Cherith, and those of you who heard me on Sunday speak about this, but the brook Sherith means a cutting away, an isolation. It means, you know, breaking covenant. And so we were in this wilderness place for a while, especially with the pandemic, and God broke away for many of us who were seeking him. He broke us out of the old mindset. He's breaking us out of that wilderness mindset. He's cutting away the dross and that which needs to be cut away for Mount Carmel, for us calling down the fire of God. But as I've said, we have to rebuild that altar. We have to rebuild that altar of intimacy in order to call the fire down.